Welcome back, everyone, to East Haven, Connecticut on a, the day after the Snowmageddon storm went through this area. <laughs> We're here at AMF Circle Lanes for the many styles of bowling Neba singles finals round of eight. And we're here at NEBA number 960. It's also the first women's series event of the year. And welcome, everyone. It's the recreational pattern, Kegel Main Street, 10 to 1 pattern, 41 feet. And we're here for the round of eight. Bruce Hall here, along with El Jefe, ball driller of the stars, Christopher Forey. Hey, Chris. Good evening, Bruce. Good welcome. evening, every ne all NEBA fans. Welcome back. And great to have you to help us break down this... 10 to 1 pattern that's sneaky challenging. I would uh, agree. Unless you, I'm going to joke around just saying unless you're left-handed. Unless you're left-handed. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, so let the let the fun begin. Seven out of our top eight are left-handed. And the one righty is his first cut ever. And the one righty is his first cut ever. His name is Brent Muti, M-U-T-T-I. Oh. And a uh, very nice uh, form on, on uh, Muti. Two-hander. Two-hander. And uh, just disposed of a lefty on uh, our feature pair 39 and 40 and in this round we have Jason Matthew uh, Jameson Jameson Matthew I knew that son of Joey Tranzu I gotta say the kids games came a long way if you remember correctly he made the top four one year at Auburn I do remember that and, and he was playing a lot straighter he's throwing a purple hammer up five mm -hmm. and I've noticed an evolution in his game I last forgot year the half. purple hammer up five but I do remember uh, him having a very nice game, and he just ripped the rack uh, with that power torque on uh, 42. And here's John Becker, Bowling Dennis, Bissonette, both of them from Chicopee. So obviously friends, so a local rivalry going on there. To the left of us some 38 right now is Rich Strath, who won another tight match last round. Bowling Hall of Famer R.J. Broge. Beat and bowling Hall of Famer R.J. Broge. So... And up on, and Eric Cornaw completes our seven lefties. Uh, against not me. Eric. Uh, it's Jason, not Eric. It's Jason sorry, Cornock. Jason, I get them confused. That's okay. I'm sorry. Not a problem. Um, and I'm sure Cornock. Eric wishes he was still in. Yes, he does. Cornaw <laughs> way up on 47 and 8 because our final pair of 43 and 4 is out of play from now on through the end of the tournament until our final match and always interesting to see what happens on that final pair without the the play especially since everybody's left-handed it's going to be interesting to see how these lanes break down Chris it is uh I was going to ask you about what we saw from 39 and 40 before because Ian Lang's ball on the left lane a couple times he went a couple flat sevens and then went through the through the face one time so we're going to see Dennis here Dennis not using the ball using qualifying I'm not sure what that particular ball is in qualifying you actually use a rhino is that right? Wow. He drilled one up just for this. Wow. I think a lot of people. An older, was, one, older one? I uh, like, you know, just you know, like a newer Rhino, but they're still yeah. very weak cores. Yeah. Um, I'd like Lich. Lich was actually throwing an elite ball, which I'm going to guess he dug out of his uh, garage somewhere because we did see some antique balls going down the lane today. I think people said, hey, there's not much volume. I got to go back to some weaker covers. Sure enough. RJ's got his little spin thing working there. I there hate to say a, spin. Well, there was a time when 19 mils was heavy. The standard. And, oh, what a beautiful conversion of the 6.8 by Dennis Bissonette going away with the big curve and makes the 6.8. Beautiful shot there. Um, and here's Hagemuser with Miss Miss. And unfortunately chops the, misses the two pin and chops off the 4.7. So there's a uh, an opening for Matthew here on that feature pair. So anyway, we can move a small way to the top corner. There's RJ Broge. What's the matter? Uh, we see the request about moving the. I think it's when I do the zoom. Oh, that's the. Uh, um, so that's the uh, Neba logo, or excuse it's me, that's my, the storm it's logo. Because when I do right? the zoom, that's why. Yeah, it's the storm logo. Uh, let's let's talk to our executive producer and see how he does. Uh, I'm gonna try uh, and figure out how to fix it. So, yeah. Maybe move the maybe move the angle of it. Maybe yeah. I would say just move the main angle a little bit, uh, all off to the left a little bit or right. Yeah, there you go. That's something. 
There you go. Let's see how that changes everything. There we go. Yeah. Ah, there you go. It's That's a little better. too far, I think. So I'll shift it back. Too far. Keep, keep working it. Keep working it. You'll be all right. My first day. I think that should be better. Let's keep an eye on that. Let's see where it's shifted now. Uh, just a hair more. I'm gonna make everybody sick out there. Shout out to Vic Morado. I haven't talked to Vic in a while. Tough uh, New Haven area bowler. And Strath came in light for a 3 8. And Jameson getting the double against Hagemoser's open gives Jameson the 24 pin lead. I will say the difference After I four. sorry about that to cut you off there. Uh, I would say the difference I see in the young man's game from back, back up from Auburn, much more longer, looser swing, uh, more athletic. So obviously growing into his body. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess I think he's maybe 17, 18 years old now. He's a tall drink of water. Yeah, I hear a pile up somewhere. You hear it? Mm -hmm. I think it's 47 and 8 up there. The uh, Jason Cornog match. No, they're, they're, they're rolling. No, it's over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody's going to have a pile up. <laughs> uh, but if you watch, he has a much more athletic move. His upper body rotates a little bit more. A longer, looser, flat hot spot in the swing. Mm -hmm. uh, Those are having gone high. On that right lane last time, made the adjustment, came up for a six pin. Oh, 18 years old, his mom said. Hello, Julie, how are you? So I was close. I said 17. Uh, I was guessing. I said 17, close. 18. Yeah. Those are great. I, I, I guess I'm impressed by how his uh, games evolved. Uh, we don't see a lot of them. I know he bowls a lot of the uh, scholarship tournaments up this way, mm -hmm. uh, you know, up in your ear area there, Bruce. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's. Went from a very weak-handed release to very strong and powerful. and yeah. he's grown it's into, it's As you say, grown into his body. He's quite a tall young man. Yep. He was tall. Yeah. I, I remember him being, like, obviously skinnier and taller uh, at Auburn. But, yeah. Oh, that might go Brooklyn on RJ. Yo, we got a nickel. Let's, let's run away, Brooklyn. And here's Becker against Beeson N. One-pin match here. And a one-pin match... In the R.J. Bros match, and Jameson, the one who's cruising in his match. Oh, and, look and we talked about going through the beak on the left lane. by John Becker. Gets the, uh, gets the uh, but we talk topping at 4, 6, 10 to go, and a the strike there. And here's Randy. That's a pretty good looking shot. It's high for an 8 pin. Thank you very much. But we talked about the balls going high on the left lane that we saw Ian's ball do a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I found the left lanes to be about a board dryer, maybe a little more, uh, across the house, very consistently. And a perfect shot, shot there by Bissonette. I'll tell you who's come a long, long way is Dennis. Well, you still He's remember the disaster loss he had at Silver that one time where he left like an eight pin, stuff like that to lose. You know, yeah. it's, it's almost like watching Air Major. At some point, you know, they're getting to the winner's circle and Dennis yeah. finally won the non-champs event. Right. RJ with the big curve and through the beak leaving a four pin only. RJ's getting a handful. Well, usually in the round of eight we don't need our binoculars, but we do. Uh, Cornog's got the front five. And the other one. Well, that's easy, isn't it? I got that for you. Cornog's got the front five, and his opponent has, a, has two Seven, opens. 76 and no doubles. And the fifth. So Cornog is cruising. Front, uh, front unfortunately, six. that's the great right hope. Uh, it's going to get eliminated. <laughs> so we'll have all Where's four, Alex have all you four need lefties. Him. I know, I know. And let the uh, let the comments begin. But uh, I want, I, my thought was, if, if Alex was going to bowl, he was on vacation. But if Alex did bowl, would he would he use like a rain or something like that, like an old what's what old storm ball would he have dug out? An uproar? I don't know. Something. Yeah. Uproar. I love that ball. Where's my uh, my outcry? That's the ball. That's the ball I needed today, actually. If I could have moved left and just piped and just soft stroke my outcry, I think I would have been fine. So why why is it left to right? I mean, what happened that it's so much better on the left? I just think that, you know, we talk about the chalkiness of a lane, so it goes back to even watching the PBA on the PBA Players Championships here a little bit. You know, lefties could play further out. The righties 
right side of the lane, you just have enough still. The surface is more beat up on the right side of the lane. Yep. So if we got our balls too far right, they just stood up and went forward. Mm -hmm. So you're forced in, and now you're forced so far into that big puddle. Mm -hmm. The angle of entry is just different. If you watch the lefties here, they're all getting the ball out to about five. Yep. I don't think I saw any righties trying to get it that, you know, they could really get it there and get it back consistently mm -hmm. and hit hard. Yeah. You know, if we got them out to there, our ball stood up and went forward, mm -hmm. and you left a lot of flat, you know, weak tens, swishing wow. sevens. Yeah. It's just a matter of the right side of the lane. Is the surface is more beat up overall. Uh, and like I said, if, you watch, if anybody watched the PBA Players Championship last weekend, you know, that was a big uproar about the lane conditions and everything and the balls, and, and it comes down to the fact that the left could play more get better entry angle by staying a little more to the left mm -hmm. and getting the ball out to the fives. You know, we all know if you get the ball out to the right angle, you have more power coming through the pins. It's so remarkable how many beat-up lane services there are in New England. And if you think about this last storm we just had, I mean, they've coated the, 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 the streets with salt and sand, and that all gets tracked in here. It's and uh, I tell you, compared to, you know, like, say, the West Coast, the places that don't have that type of – I think it really makes a big difference, you know, on, on, on the – the lifespan of the lanes and how and the, the heads scratch up. Yeah, I, mean, I think also that, you know, we have, I mean, obviously bowling is big in the West Coast too, but we have a lot more bowling that goes on in the Northeast. Cold weather states have more bowling. Um, Rich Strath with an error uh, going by the seven pin. He does have a two doubles, so that moves that back to a three pin match against RJ Brosian, 37 and eight. And meanwhile, Bissonnette with the seven pin is going to fall behind in his match by virtue of Becker's triple. The other thing I would tell you, I think lefties are always, no matter what, going to try and figure out how to throw it. Well, that's, he cut that one short. Cut it short through the beak. No love. Two, four, seven, ten for Randy Hagemoser. I think the Rays are always, Rays like to wheel it, but they're always going to try and figure out how to get into the puddle. They're going to try and find the puddle because of the surface. So when we do that, especially like I said, where you have that big runway, your ball just can't get the energy to get to the pocket the right way. And you, you know, I mean, if right. you if you miss right. by a couple inches front to back, um, like I said, we see all the lefties really creating that area. I mean, everybody, all the every lefty is bowling right now is getting their ball to about six, seven, maybe five. And you can start it a little bit further left just because of the fresh heads. Right. Exactly. Right. So you've got you know fresh heads to save energy, get through it. Instead of burning it early when you need every ounce of energy to get it around the pattern. Yep. Right? Oh. And there's an RJ. Comes up high. Almost a 6-8. Trips the 6. Leaving just the 8. And he'll have a narrow lead once again. Chris, we have over 60,000 in sponsorships this year in terms of cash and donated equipment. Um, we'll start off with our friend. LaRue, many styles of bowling. We just finished the Cambridge Credit event at uh, Callahan's in a fantastic turnout there and great uh, great competition there. Uh, won by none other than Alex Aguiar, winning his 26th title. Congratulations to Alex. And East Coast Sports Investors coming up to sponsoring our trios on February 26th. On the 27th, we have the double sponsored by Strike FX Pro Shops, your friends, and also Alex again, Alex and John. Uh, other sponsors, Bullwinkle's Pro Shop, you, Mr. Forey, BuddiesProShop.com, add $1,000 to the Buddies Open and $10,000 to the Paul Forey Memorial Series, paying out 20 spots uh, as we move through the year. Uh, I Am Bowling, powered by Logo Infusion, sponsors a senior event, Ace Mitchell, Green Mountain Open. We're going back to Rutland, and we'll see our friend John Wilbur up there, Rutland Bowlerama. Dexter Bowling Shoes coming up in Chicopee, as well as Savage Arms. And, and go ahead. Uh, I was going to say Jameson uh, with a big triple. Uh, got that one in just a couple boards, and his ball held up compared to Randy, who went dead face. So uh, right now he's got a very commanding lead. He's got a 69. He's got a 60, a 58 pin lead. Oh yeah, he's, he's crushing it. So. Um, Savage Arms and Turbo Grips are handling our, our Chicopee singles. The over under 50 doubles, the target is at Cranston Lanes. Greg Grog Monster Sports, a new a new sponsor this year, sponsoring our doubles at Cranston Lanes in June. Callahan's Bolarama going back there for the singles in July. We're having our Yankee Lanes event, adding $1,000 to each. The doubles and singles event is Jeff Barden. So 
thanks, Jeff. It will be another great weekend at the very end of July, early August, July 30th, 31st. Chicago Sam's, a new sponsor, is sponsoring a senior event in August. BowlingSeriously.com and Joanne Herman, of course, sponsoring the women's series and gave $40 off to every woman's entry here. We had 39 women bowl, Chris, and I don't know how many of those were uh, first entries, but quite a great turnout uh, on 39? the women's side. Uh, so it was great to see all the women out here. 23, excuse me. That's 39, okay. So. Um, 39 would have been a record. I know, right? Tony and Susie Renaud and Bluefield Electric sponsoring our Masters. Tech Vision live streaming. Yours truly running the oh, RJ Hall Memorial. Coming up, RJ four six seven. And the ball barely hit the head pin, so he actually had to. He had to three four six seven. Oh no three kidding! Five. Oh wow! So un un timely break, bad break there because obviously he can make the other one. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. There. Yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, KR Strike Force sponsoring our singles in October. Yankee Lanes. We're going to Yankee Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire for a singles, senior, and women event. And Chris trying to get the attention of uh, they got, they John got, Becker. They, no, they got it. Well, because he, uh, he gave the foul. He gave him the foul, yeah. I think they found it. Uh, DJ's Pro Shops wants oh, to Oh, lower 710. Storm Rotogrip 900 Global Tournament of Champions coming up in November. And Better Bowling Concepts and Ideal Bowling Concepts sponsoring seniors events and singles events in December. So thanks so much to all of our 2022 sponsors. We have a great NEBA schedule with 27 events. I'm going to show the scoreboard here. So here's the scoreboard got? of Dennis against John Becker. John is letter B. Dennis is letter A. If Dennis throws a double here. Four take, take, the the lead, yeah. take the lead by two. Yeah, that's right. Jamison uh, left the 710, but luckily uh, well, he needs didn't to matter. Be, yeah, that, that, that match is over. Jamison Oh, that's advances. Brooklyn. That's right. Way right. Wild ball never hooked. Through the beak. Just went straight. And unfortunately, he Giving needed it back. a double there. And here's Strath with, oh, excuse me, R.J. Broge back-to-back -back splits and opens. So R.J. can only get to 190. Strath got 150, 170. Matt Strath can go well, open. He needs to go open up the win. win. Yeah, Strath he, needs he a mark in two frames to make the top four. Strath, the super senior, just soft stroking it and really is proving the point, Chris, that if you're just nice to it at the bottom, you don't try to overpower it, let the ball do the work. Uh, that's really the winning formula on this shot. Yep. And Rich, another soft stroke, gets it up, carry it. Rich Strath in the top four. And Bissonette going by the no two good. four seven eight. Now Bissonette in a deep hole, maxing Very out hole. at 212. And Becker cruising at a 215 pace. So mark, mark by Becker. And that match is over. So we have Strath. Looks like Becker. Jameson, Matthew, and who won the, and of course, the Jason uh, Kornog Korn match. Kornog had to win that so one. So Kornog, Matthew. Kornog slowed down down the stretch, but he won 230, anyway, something to 149. Front five, yeah, bad, bad game by the righty there. So. The lone. The lone right-handed hope. Hey, we never picked our winner, my friend. Uh, which lefty are you going to go with? I was going to go with Muti, but uh, apparently he, he's out of the tournament now. So uh, I'm going to go with my, my friend Rich Strath. I'm going with Jameson. All I got right. a feeling Jameson for the kid. I love, I love how okay, he's throwing it. Go. Well, who's up next? What, what's the bracket show us? Uh, I have no idea. My bracket's so what? beat up. Did you get, didn't you get a, I I didn't get you get a new one. one? I didn't get a new one. No. Have have we'll get one here. I have to have a chat with Mr. Danny. No, I thought, uh, I thought well, Andrew would we'll we'll know soon enough, so they'll be right here on the live stream. So. Usually it goes whoever side by side. Yeah. So these two should shift over to 43 and f uh, 45 and 6, and the other ones. Well, no, they're going to go to. We're going to be right here for the next round of four. So they should flip flop. So these right. two, so these James two should go over here. These right. two should go over here. Right. Becker will go here. Jameson will go. Cornog and Jameson should come over here, and Becker and Strath should go over to here. Okay. But Strath just came off of 41. So you too, think didn't it's he? Becker and Strath against Jameson and Cornog? I That's would think so. Mean. Okay. But we're going to find out. I hope you're right, because I'm taking Rich, and I would, it would be fun to see our two picks in the finals, is what I'm saying. That could be one. No, look at this. We have an open again. So that's 184 to 214. So he needs a double nine to shut out. Yeah, this not net. so fast on Becker, because he just went open, open. So tough finish for these guys here on 39. Way to throw the jinx in there. Yeah, thank you. That's the announcer's curse. Well, John is a relative newbie to match play, so... 
He does need a double now to shut out Dennis. Meanwhile, the 49ers leading the Rams 10-7. Football games have been really good the last two weeks. <laughs> Man, another overtime gem. I mean, that's... That's in, too. Right. That's seven, so that's even worse. Because now he seven. gets... Now he's got to make this. To still gonna need a, Dennis still needs a double, net. though. If he makes a spare and gets nine. Correct. Sorry, I'm ahead of everything. You are. You're so fast with the math. It's like you run a business or something. How's, your, how's your warehouse doing? Did you busy. add another million feet? No. Square feet? No? No, no. Busy. Oh, busy, though. Yeah. Busy. Drilling, uh... Drilling's been good. I'm glad we have four presses going now. What are the hot pieces? Four presses. Imagine that. Hot pieces? Gosh, I mean, Alter Realities, Helios, Wolverine's been really good. Spectre just came out, Nova. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine is what LaRue used earlier, Yeah, right? Wolverine, great, great yeah. ball for the price. That and the Spectre are not overpriced. Uh, you know, they're both in that before drilling 140 range. Depends on what people charge for drilling. But Spectre really good is piece what uh, Belmonte was using. Right? He that used that the other pieces. night. Uh, he needs to get nine. And he gets and nine he gets strikes. And 204. So Bissonnette needs, needs a, a double. double. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of good products going out. It's just a steady flow. It's uh it's really interesting. The bowling business is uh after COVID, even though we lost so many centers throughout the nation, um, ball sales have been the manufacturer will tell you have been the best they've been in twenty some years. There's one by Bissonnette, dead flush. He did he he went pretty quick. He didn't even take his time. I mean like he didn't. Went up and stroked it. Beautiful look at that shot. first down over there. Sorry, I packed this one. I just happened to look up and I'm like, that's pretty impressive. The guy was three yards short. Yeah, and he I wiggled want, his way down. I want Joe Buck's job. That's it. That's what I want. I want to graduate from bowling and move over to the Niners. I don't think we're getting there. Rams? No, not quite. All right, Bisonette. Somebody just shot 300 down on uh, the league. Shot of the day for Bisonette. Here we go. Got a handful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Oh. Brings the seven and will not advance. John Becker survives. <laughs> and even with the opens in the eighth and ninth, Becker uh, makes it on to the semifinals. Worst shot of the game was the eighth frame yeah. for uh, Bisson at the three, uh, two, four, seven, yeah, eight, where yeah, he got it dead up the lane. And what's yeah, funny is he got think. it so far up the lane, you would think we were talking about how they go Brooklyn on you or just check up a lane. His ball, his ball went dead straight. Laid off and went through the beak. It would have been better off Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. So, anyway, another good day by Dennis. So, our four are set. And so we, we have Strath, Strath Becker. Matthew, Matthew and Cornog. All right, guys, we'll be right back and see you in a little bit for the round of four. <laughs> 